Welcome, welcome to the Rick Help Real Estate Show. Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Don't leave out the S. Uh, this is the channel for you to watch to get updates on the Arizona real estate market. You're not going to get wild projections looking out another year. Here comes the crash or, hey, this is the best time to buy ever. Uh, that's not what I do. So if you want to see what's going on, look at the numbers, make your own decisions. I share those with you here and give you some resources as well to look at to help you make the decisions. I know affordability is tough out there. We have a lot of people waiting on the sidelines for all kinds of various reasons. And that's just the market that we're in. And it's pretty slow. And uh, I always kind of like to look at some of the news that's out there and, and uh, the headlines. And I, you know, I read a couple articles and I'll show them to you here in a minute where they reference that, you know, now that rates are down at six, well, they were, but now they're 6.53. So what the heck happened? Well, this week, the jobs numbers came out. And they were much better than expected. And when you get that good news, um, the bond markets react and the mortgage rates went up. So the general feeling in July, especially in the industry, everybody was saying title reps, real estate agents, loan reps, are going to have four to six rate cuts this year. Well, we've had one. And, uh, and those four to six rate cuts are going to come in rapid fashion. They're going to be big and the buyers are going to come out of the woodworks and they're going to start buying. Bidding wars are going to return. Hurry up, get in now. They were pointing towards September 18th when the central bank was going to announce their cut. Now, the bond market had already priced in a 0 0.50 cut, was already there. So when Chairman Powell gets out there and says, well, we cut 0 0.50, everybody yawned and said, yeah, we knew that. We saw that coming. And the rates went up a tick. Well, Based on the numbers that they're seeing now in the economy, GDP was up. They thought it'd be down. Remember all the people told you we were going to have recessions this year? Still don't have it. So I guess my point is projecting out long term, there aren't too many people that get it right. So when you see the fire and crash video stuff out there, just take that with a grain of salt. I mean, I know there's a lot of you that follow them and go, here it comes. This is the guy. He's right. Hang in there. Um, I don't know if that's going to be the case and I'm not going to predict it. If I did, my views would be exploding. It'd be great. I'd be making all kinds of money on YouTube, but the rate cuts that are coming now seem to be kind of going off the table or delayed for a little bit with the fact that Chairman Powell said, well, we're going to be patient. We're going to wait. Now he said that two years ago and guess what? They were patient and they waited. They don't want to repeat the mistakes that were made in the late seventies that reignited inflation. So they're, they're going to wait. Having said that the bond market looks and they did a survey and 70% of them just about a month and a half ago was expecting another 0 0.50 cut. Now that number's changed to 0 0.25 if they cut at all. So expecting four to six rate cuts at the end of the year, we're a little late. We're sitting here in October. We only got two more chances and only two more times to cut rates. So four to six out the window. So what are we seeing? Well, I like looking at the Cromford report and uh, they don't make long-term projections either. And you can see here that they have a comment here that says the general picture for is of low volume, but stable pricing. The outlook is for volume to improve a bit and for prices to remain stable with slight downward tendency due to the slight excess of supply over demand. And that's what I'm seeing. I track what's called the seven day moving average. And I, I literally go in and pull up how many new listings have come on, how many homes have gone back on the market, whether they fell off or they took it off for a reason. And, uh, and then how many contracts do we have? And I also subtract the number of canceled listings and expireds. Now at the first of every month, expired listings spike up because people always tend to set their listing to expire at the end of a calendar month. And we've seen that. And we see that, here, as we look at um, our expired listings, it lowered the amount of new listings that came on the market. But as a rule, it stayed kind of flat. But this is the number I want to point out. Here. This is a seven-day moving average. It has not moved 2,500 to 2,550 every seven days. And the reason I bring that up is I've seen plenty of articles out there where people in the real estate industry have been interviewed and they go, yeah, we've had a huge increase in activity since rates went down in September. They aren't buying 
I mean, they may be calling you, you may be driving around the cars, but the number of contracts on a weekly basis, it ain't there. It's not there on my seven day moving average and it is not showing up in pending listings. Say what we wish, but this is pending listings right there. Sure. We had one tick up from 42 to 44, but it's not there. It's not kind of, and I don't expect it to, uh, to jump up anytime soon. So you bring these articles out now that says, here's one here says <clears throat> the Goldilocks window for buying a Valley home. When will it open or close? Everybody's looking for that perfect time. When do I buy? When's it going to be good? So they bring in a few people. One of them is uh, Tina Tambor from the Cromford report. And uh, so, you know, she says that uh, the fourth quarter tends to be the best time to buy a home in Metro Phoenix. That's usually when there's a boost supply. We're seeing that. There's a corresponding boost in demand. Oh, when there's a boost in supply without a corresponding boost in demand. That's what we're seeing. We've seen supply go up. Demand is flat. Okay. Joffe have a very successful brokerage here in the Valley. This year is similar to what we're seeing in a boost in demand, but since mortgage rates have dropped below 6.5, this article is a little old. Between 6.1 and 6.2, September 11th, buyer demand has picked up 11.5% from three weeks ago, most notably between 300,000 and 800,000, where mortgage rates are more influential. Buyer demand has picked up. Closed transactions have not yet. Haven't seen it. Here's one. Interesting one. This is uh, closings over list price. <coughs> Does that still happen? Well, it's more active in the between 300 and 500,000 range. But then when you look at it, it's really only $5,000. So the, typically what that is, is buyers asking for closing cost assistance from the sellers. So the sellers, so they're offering them a little bit more than their asking price, hoping that they'll pass it back. And they are getting that. And that's still going on, but not much. Now we go back and I, I encourage people to go ahead and look at the St. Louis Federal Reserve data as you read articles and stuff. I was called a data nerd yesterday. Um, my friends in school would be laughing at that. But um, I guess I'm a little skeptical when I read some things. I like to go in and go, okay, well, how much is that true? How much is that type? Because we've seen so much of it this year. You got to go back in and take a look at it. This is, it's fred.stlouisfed.org. You can look up all kinds of things. This is money supply M2. See this big spike up right here? This is the major recession when we shut everything down because of the big cough. So all this money got injected into our system, went up, up, and up. Well, now you know why house prices went up. This is why. Had too much money chasing too few goods. We got down to where we only had 4,800 homes for sale in this market. And we were selling uh, 4,400 a week. That's why you had the bidding wars. Now the money supply has dropped, but not by much. I suppose if we trend it out, because it always has a natural increase. My mouse, I'm not as level with it as I should be. But maybe we're approaching normal money supply. I think that's probably true. And thus, we're getting closer and closer to a balanced market. But you can go in and check that yourself, and you can take a look at it. It's fred.org. Um, you've got, when you get to the site, you can look at just about any category you want. GDP, unemployment, CPI, inflation, unemployment rate, uh, M2. That's what we just looked at. Interest rates, uh, employment. And it says all employees, non-farm. And there's the big drop off there. And then jobs coming back. So when you hear about all the jobs that were added, no, they were jobs that came back. Again, if you look at the overall trend in jobs, we're back where we should be. We didn't exceed anything. Don't accuse me of being political. Just accuse me of being a little bit of a skeptic. And when I see some numbers like that, I like to dig in and see, well, what is it? Now, this I think you'll find helpful. As soon as I can pull it up, it's not letting me. There we go. See, I don't rehearse this. I just do it on my own here. This is our website, rickhelps.com. And you can search using the MLS, but that's not why I'm bringing you. I'm bringing you here because if you want a home value report, we can send you one. And I think you'll like it. And I'm going to show you an example. Just put your name, email, and their address, including the city, please. Um, because some people put in their address. I can't do anything with it without the city. 
And we will send you a report that's different than these online aggregators where you put in your address and it goes 520,000. Oh, cool. Or your Zestimate. Here's why. This shows, I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top, almost all the way up. I'm going to come down just a hair there. This shows you, I'm going to tick it up just a bit here, a number here at the top that says 552,000. And it's a range. Okay, that's important. It says that it has high confidence that you fall in this range from 498 to 606. And probably you're resting at about 552. But keep in mind, I don't know what your kitchen looks like, your bathrooms look like, your flooring. You do. So when you get a report like this, you can take a look at your own comps on your own. And this will show you right here, recent similar comparables for the past year. It gives you the address and you can take a look at it. Shows you a value forecast that you can take with a grain of salt. Then it shows you similar comparables out almost a year out. And it shows them on a map. Shows you the addresses down here. Active listings. What's for sale in your neighborhood now? That's what it's all about. If you're going to list your price, there's other active listings. Where did they price their house? Where do I come in that mix? So you want to look at that because here's the danger. A lot of people fall into interviewing a realtor and they pick the realtor that gives them the highest price. You need to be really drilled in on this. If you're going to list your house, you need to know the value and you can look at it and you can research it and you can get a report like this. And when that realtor comes and he says, you're priced in here, you can say that seems a little low or that seems a little high. So you need to look at it together because ultimately the decision to price your house is yours. Too many people say my realtor told me to price it here. You need to be heavily involved in this process, folks. Here's historical comparables out four years. Not sure that going out four years does that much, but then it shows you square feet, all kinds of statistics, and your market analysis. This is showing we're almost at a balanced market. One year risk of decline, not much. That seems about standard for where we are right now. So again, you just go to rickhelps.com, fill out that form. We get it. We do the report. Actually, I send it to Pat. Pat sends the report out to you and you can have um, lots of data to look at in your spare time. Now, there's an article here that came out talking about homes being overpriced and where they need to be in order to reach affordability. And they are quoting um, Redfin. And they have a lot of analysts at Redfin. This is interesting. So hang in here with me on this one because it says for homes to become more affordable, home prices would need to drop by, get this, 28% with current mortgage rates of 6%. That's a drop of about $121,000. Now, while you digest that, she follows up and says, but that's not about to happen anytime soon. Sorry, Reventure. A correction of that magnitude is unlikely in the near term due to strong pent up demand for home buyers and a constrained supply of home listings. She added her long term projection, not mine. But I can't really disagree with this too much, but we'll wait and see what happens. What's more likely to happen is that home price growth could slow over time while incomes grow faster, giving people more purchasing power. Over time, that could bring housing payment income ratio closer to a historic norm. Now, people hoping for a severe reduction in house prices uh, probably find that prognostication a little disappointing. Uh, it's highly possible that we could just be stuck here for a while. In fact, the show that we did Thursday at 5 p.m., we shared an article that said that we could be sitting in this situation for five to 10 years, but there's always big ebbs and flows over a five to 10 year period. So that's kind of a, that's more of a, well, this could happen. Um, but nobody knows for sure. And they don't know for sure because, you know, even Zillow had to roll back their forecast for this year. They were predicting, I think, uh, a bigger increase in the home price for the year. And it, they rolled it back, I think maybe to about 1.6% from somewhere in three, nothing major, but you know, it's a moving target all the time. Trying to find the peak or the bottom is impossible. Nobody rings a bell that says, okay, home prices are going to go up from here. Get in here now. So it's all your personal choice. It's your personal preferences. And we spoke last week that, you know, whenever you go out and you get a pre-approval, the pre-approval and the payment amount is way higher than what you can tolerate. 
but they're just basing it off of ratios on debt to income, but they don't know your lifestyle. You know, I can't afford that house payment. If I got that, I can't go out to dinner. I can't take the kids to Disneyland. You're the only one that knows that. I mean, I would go in for pre-approvals. I moved several times corporately. Like they would give me this, here's what you can afford. I go, what planet are you from? <laughs> I got three boys. They like to eat. Um, so, so you have to be able to stay within your comfort zone. Don't make anybody push you outside of it. Now, realtors, will they show you a home that's outside of the price range that you gave them? Yes. Why? Because you can pull them down sometimes. Sometimes you miss that house that's perfect for you because it's $10,000 more than what you told the agent you wanted. So we feel like you might want to peek at it, not because we get more on commission. Because a commission on no sale is no commission. It's because, take a look at this. It's outside of your peak that you wanted, but you know, if you really like it, maybe we can do something. Maybe instead of 510, we can go in and get it for 500 because that's where you, you wanted to stay. And sometimes that works. Um, sometimes you look something that's way out of your price range. You go, wow, I really like that. Um, but agents send it to you because when we get stuck in that search bracket, there's something just outside of it that may be very enticing for you. And, uh, and then there's sometimes homes below that price market that we go, Hey, take a look at this. So I know when I get a search, that's somebody says they want to buy for 1.5 million. I set up the search for 1 million to 2 million and then see what's, what's out there. But I try not to send them anything that's above 1.5 without giving an explanation. I saw this pop up. It's new. They're asking 1.8. We may want to put this on our radar and take a look at it, see what's going on. And then, and then see if we can pull them down later if you're interested in it. But it, it's not an intention to say, ooh, I really want you to buy the 1.8 instead of the 1.5. So just an idea. The other thing, somebody asked me on the live show the other day, their agent's sending them Zillow listings. They should be sending you things from the MLS. If you've got a search set up, ask your agent to send you a list of coming soon. Coming soon listings aren't on the market yet. Sometimes they'll only have one photo because they haven't hired the photographer to show up yet or they're painting, but they want to let you know that this is about to hit the market and here's what the price will probably be. They make that decision the day before they list it, but you can't get coming soon's on Zillow last time I checked, but you can take a look at it and go put that on your radar. Oh, maybe we can get in and see it before it gets listed. So I hope you find that helpful. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. Take care.